Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Everyday Artist and I'm Eve and today I'm going to do uh, some acrylic painting. It, every time I will not be doing the same thing. Some will be acrylic, some will be uh, Prismacolor, uh, watercolor. I'm not a master at any of these. I just have done a lot of them. And, um, but my favorite medium is uh, pastels and acrylic painting. Uh, I've been doing acrylic painting the longest. I started doing it when I was very, very young. Um, and uh, and I, I did go to art school, but not for that. <laughs> um, in art school, we uh, concentrated more on commercial art. So um, I'm just going to show you some uh, techniques that I do. Other people do things very differently. And uh, this is more finding your own way through it. Um, there is no magic about what to buy and there's no magic about what kind of brushes or anything like that. Um, you can pick up uh, you know the bottled craft acrylic paints and work with those. Whatever is at hand. Don't go out and spend tons of money. And I, not when you're learning, you'll know what you like better after you learn for a while. Today I'm using a small uh, canvas. It's uh, I, I've done a, three of these paintings already. Uh, daisies, um, tulips, and a rose. And um, these are lilies. I took this picture. Uh, these were sent to us after my mother passed away and I took this picture and um, I thought it went really well with the flower paintings that I was doing. Um, my mother had really liked them and she wanted me to make some coasters from them so that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm not going to keep the canvas on here, I mean the picture on here, but I will bring it back to show you what I'm talking about periodically. This is a uh, disposable palette. I also use it to keep my, if I'm doing a small painting, I keep my painting on there and I put the colors um, on the same canvas, on the same surface. Um, it's just a habit I've gotten into if I'm doing something small. So the predominant color in this uh, picture is white. The white is never white. Any of you who've done any other kind of craft stuff like cross stitching or anything like that. There's several different colors of white. There's bright white, there's white, there's just barely white, off white, there's eggshell, you know, all of those. This doily down here, which I may or may not do because it's kind of futzy for what I want to do on these, um, is a bright white. The lily is not. And as you can see, it's got some lighter areas and that's the first thing with learning to um, draw paint do anything is to see what you're looking at whether you're um, outside painting you know from nature if you're not using a reference and painting from memory your mind has to have seen what it is um, so I took I went ahead and did a quick drawing. I don't know if you can see it. It's very light. I always draw. Uh, I may not. I may paint right over it at first, but I always draw lightly what I'm going to do to make sure what my composition is going to look like. That I have it spaced where I want it spaced on the canvas. Many people do not, um, but I've found that for me. If I don't, I end up going off the page. It's like when you're trying to write a title on something and you end up having to write really small at the end because you ran out of room. Um, so I drew it, but always if you're going to draw it on there, use pencil. Do not use ink. Um, ink is water-based, uh, you know, if you use a pen. And so when if you paint over it, that'll bleed into your paintings. So make sure you use pencil. Um, Pretty much any kind of pencil, but just a regular ordinary lead pencil is what I use. All right, now 
to get started what you're going to need is paint brushes um, these are inexpensive paint brushes of various sizes these came in a pack for not very much at a hobby store and um, and as did these but I just wanted a little bit fatter of a of a top and obviously these have not been used <laughs> these have not been used at all and these have been used just a little bit so um, and you're gonna need uh, I'm going to use hookers green again this is from a hobby store and it is an inexpensive brand of paint um, you can go to a paint store and get stuff that's more expensive um, but while you're learning it, it you know there's no point in spending that kind of money it doesn't work better when you're learning um, this is common yellow and uh, you could also use you know just lemon yellow ordinary yellow of course titanium white because this is a white um, piece and ivory black I like ivory black um, and then uh, there's two main blacks Mars black ivory black I like ivory black um, yellow oxide and it's not important to what you're doing but later on you're going to want to look at these kinds of things on your paints it it tells you how opaque it is it tells you um, what the pigment it's using is um, so for instance this color is very opaque and I want to find one that's not so just a moment uh, this one here is semi opaque and I, I used to teach art um, and I used to tell people uh, opaque means solid like a door transparent is like a window so if you're gonna want something to cover something else you're gonna want to pick something opaque and then uh, burnt umber okay so since our picture is mostly white I'm gonna start by putting white down on my on my palette and I'm gonna be adding other colors as I need them because I live in Arizona and the air is so dry that the paints dry almost the moment I put them on the palette I've been considering putting a humidifier in here but that causes other problems for other things I do so I want to keep in mind that I'm going to need some yellows in here, my greens in here, but I want to go ahead and block out my um, my flower. So I'm going to put some titanium white on my palette, and you always use more white than you think you would, but you can always add more. So you know you want to mix as much as you think you're going to need if you're mixing a color but a pure color you can always add more so um, uh, you don't have to lay it all down all at once make sure you have some paper towels handy um, and of course a container of water this is filthy inside I know but it's clean water um, so I am going to use the wider brush that I have and this is a, a number eight flat brush um, but whatever size for whatever canvas you're doing is fine now I'm not going to put in normally I do the whole background first but I'm not going to put this in here quite yet because I haven't really decided if I want to add more leaves and I'm not actually painting the flower I'm just blocking it in so now I'm adding water getting my paintbrush pretty wet and I'm loading both sides of my paintbrush by patting it in the paint I don't want it dripping but I want a good amount of paint on here because I want to go over the flowers and I'm just gently curving where 
I'm not doing the insides yet because I'm just getting the shape of a flower in here. And remember that your paintbrush has different sides for a reason. You can paint with the side of the brush, not just one side. Now this one, this petal here is less white. It's more on the gray side. So I'm going to leave it for right now. I'm going to put this petal in. And then this one has a really bright spot right here, but the inner part I'm going to leave for right now. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. I'm just generally putting in. See how dark this one is? This one, it's only light up here. Now, I've decided that um, this is part of this, sorry, this is part of this flower. I pulled it over here to me and you can't even see what I'm talking about. Um, these colors, this one is so dark I don't want to put it in yet. And this one is dark on one side. And I didn't put this inside here because we got these things to deal with. I'm going to just put general white in shapes behind on this side. And here I'm going to go ahead and put some white on there. Now, this will cover your paint, your, your pencil lines. Don't worry about that. We're just now, uh, we're replacing them, not, you know, and, and, and it's giving you a place to start, not to finish. Okay, now, um, I think I will put the, the doily in down here, but it is, um, in a different way. It is um, on top of a clear glass table and you can see the dark underneath the table and so we're gonna kinda work with that a little bit uh, so instead of painting the white on the dark we're actually gonna paint the dark on the white. And I think that'll make it easy enough for us to get that in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a base of but I'm going to leave a little edge in between the flower and where this is going to go so that I can still tell where my flower is. And don't forget the sides of your painting. Go all the way to the edge. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, I've seen a lot of artists that you know, they put tape around the edge. That's great, but paint up to the tape um, so that you get a clean look on the front. See, you, you need to make sure you go where it's not, you know, the painting doesn't end here. You want it to end, whoops, did I slide it down? I'm, so, I'm sorry. So that the painting doesn't end right here. You want it, you want to be able to see the whole thing. Um, I'm just filling in some more here, but here, instead of this that's right here, I'm just going to put more leaves right here. And um, as I said, I'm just going to put some kind of leaves in the background here. I'm not going to worry about exactly what the painting is, a picture is right there. You don't have to follow it exactly for it to look um, like a flower and like you want it to look. And keep getting your paintbrush wet. I'm, I'm in this background I'm not wanting it too wet. Alright so I'm done laying in that part of the flowers. Um, I'm going to now start adding color to the flower so that it's more than just white. And it's not super yellow, but it does have a pale, pale yellow tint in some areas. So 
that's why the yellow and you need to make sure that you are not overpowering your white with that yellow um, because it'll it'll get really close to overpowering and this is just a slightly browner shade of yellow and I don't want to take out too much because I don't want to be tempted to overdo it um, we're going to do with the the yellow and whites first and then we're going to build it darker so I'm going to get quite a bit of white and separate it from the main white and then I just touch a little bit of yellow because I want this yellow more white than yellow I'm adding a little bit of water to this and you see it's very very pale and oops painting my paintbrushes um, and then I, I you can use a palette knife for this you should use a palette knife for this I'm just not in the habit of using palette knives so I have some, they're somewhere, I just don't use them. Um, so then I can even hold it up against my painting and say, is that good? I mean, in my picture, is that a good yellow for me? Or is that too bright? Is that too saturated? Is it not bright enough? And I like it. So, um, so I'm leaving it. Now, I'm going to paint right down the middle here. and also this part right here over here right down the middle here and right down the middle here some of this inside part And now I'm going to uh, rinse my brush off in the water. Again, remember I said about paper towels. So I've rinsed it off. I'm not washing it. I'm just rinsing it off. I still want to use this paintbrush. And it doesn't have to be totally clean. I just want to get some more white on there before this dries completely and it will dry fast that's the nice thing about acrylics I I like oil paints and I would paint with oil paints but <laughs> I don't have the kind of lifestyle that I can walk away from it and let it dry for the time it needs to dry without getting pet hair and other things and <laughs> stuff in it if I had a studio where it could be safe from everything, you know, maybe. But I've never had that. I, I actually, right now, I paint in my room. You, you know, different times of life, I've had different areas where I could paint in different places. And you see it's already getting just a little bit of dimension to it. And if your paint isn't, if your paint isn't uh, moving smoothly, it's because it needs a little water added to it. And I'm going to go ahead and use some of that yellowish white back here. It'll give the impression of more flowers without actually having to draw flowers. And I'm looking at the picture. There's a highlight here and one here. I'm using this time right now to start putting them in. Now, in, in acrylics, normally you go dark to light. But since this is a very light flower, I'm doing it the opposite way. In... Um, watercolors generally you go light to dark because they're transparent and you can't get the um, you know you can't paint white over black with watercolors gouache a little bit you can 
and a gouache is like a watercolor but it's more um, it's more more opaque now I'm gonna do kind of the same thing with this one I'm gonna get quite a bit of white and just a touch of this color because I can add more of that color if I want to but you can't take it out and then you have to add more white and then you have to add more the other color you know it's kind of troubling <laughs> so I don't mind that it's not all completely mixed as into one solid color um, some people do um, I don't so go ahead and 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 do what your taste is oops sorry my dog is trying to be near me and she just jiggled the camera I apologize she's annoyed that I'm not paying attention to her so And again, I'm going to be adding in um, some more white. So, and it is not going to look exactly like the flower. And you have to realize that ahead of time. You know, it'll look like the flower, but it won't be the flower. It won't be exact. And you and you have to let yourself not, you know, worry about perfection especially if you're learning um, it's not gonna come together that fast again I'm going to rinse off my paintbrush and wipe it wipe it with the paint paper towel it's still got some of that color in there that's okay I'm gonna put some white down again and I did it too thickly and now I might have to go back and put some more of that color on there and maybe I did uh, I don't know we'll look at it it was starting to look really good and then I messed it up oh no it's okay <laughs> that's the nice thing with acrylics is that it's okay um, it is a little runny so it's hard for me to look and see what I got going here I got um, I lost the middle line so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on again I'm going ahead and making it a little bit more defined on these two. You don't want to go really dark on this yet. Sorry, I know I'm not talking, but I'm concentrating. So, the flower shading and stuff is pretty much done at this point. Um, I know it like it looks like we haven't done a lot. Uh, we'll be getting a little bit more in there, but don't you know? We're, one of the worst things is just overdoing. I'm going to be putting some really dark stuff in there, but I want it to dry a little bit so we're gonna move on right now to the um, the hooker screen this is for the leaves and you do want to take a look at what kind of leaf it is what the shape is in general now this is one of those arrangement so it's got you know leaves that don't necessarily go with the plant and leaves that some of this that's back here is an, another type of flower um, but I'm just gonna put the general feeling of leaves of this so I have my hooker screen 
and I don't need a whole lot of it. I probably put three times as much as what I need. And I'm going to get a smaller paintbrush in a different shape. This is a um, number three, and it's round. And always wet your paintbrush first, especially if you've never used it. There's a um, there's a sizing in it, just like a cloth or t-shirts, you know, to make it look pretty. And you want to get that off before you start using it. So, um, I'm going for the leaf here. And I really like Hooker's Green. It's a really nice um, color. And when it's thin, it's very light. And when it's thick, it's very dark. So you can get shading on this without trying to mix a whole bunch of different colors, which can be very, very very nice when you're painting because then you have the ability to give dimension to your to your item without having to make sure you're mixing the same color I just stuck my painting in the white paint <laughs> but that's okay because it's white on that edge um, so <laughs> normally I don't have them so close together but I want to make sure that you can see what I'm doing so I'm taking some of this and putting another coat in some areas. Now acrylic, if you paint wet acrylic over wet, um, sometimes you will, instead of making it darker, pull the paint off the canvas. Since it is a, um, since it is a water-based item and, and, uh, you know, when you're putting a wet uh, paintbrush to it, it thinks you're trying to wipe it off. So if that's happening to you, just step away from that and, and move on to another part of the canvas and let it dry just a little bit, and then you can go back and paint your other coat. And I'm just put, putting a little bit of space in between my leaves here. And <laughs> I'm always saying to my students, brush strokes matter. Um, when the paint dries, you can see what direction your paintbrush was going. And sometimes it's the difference between making something look like an object and, and just like you're just filling it in. And um, if you recall, it, that's one of the ways they um, can tell, you know, some of the old masters and, or, you know, other artists if it's an authentic painting because they can look at the brush strokes and tell if it's that artist or not. So pay attention to your brush strokes. Um, just like if you're drawing with marker or whatever, you do want to try to, oops, well, drat. I'm going to make this leaf a little narrower now. Gotta love acrylics. So, um, leaves have a certain way that they look. They go out from the stem. And so if you paint them side to side, um, that's going to make them not look as good. So try to paint them along their length. Getting a little dry here. I had to turn off the fan in my room so that the paints wouldn't dry as fast. And 
I have a fan on my room 24-7 all year round, you know. So, um, because even, even in the winter, my sister likes to joke um, that, that we get all four seasons. In the morning, it's winter. By noon, it's spring. In the afternoon, it's summer. In the evening, it's fall. And it is kind of like that. It can be really cold. Even in the summer months, the mornings can be pretty cold. Now, I haven't gone through and put any other colors, but you see how it goes from light to dark based on how much I've painted on it, um, how many coats it has, how thick the paint was when I applied it. That's one of the reasons I like Hooker's Green. And that happens with an opaque or semi-opaque um, paint. It's semi-opaque. That's why the first coat is kind of see-through and lighter, and that's why I wanted to use that. Now, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of this. It'll blend in, don't worry. Just to give it a little bit of a difference. Just, it'll just alter the color just a hair. And the, um, the yellow oxide is an opaque color, so it went over completely, but I can go over it with this color by just adding more coats to tone it down some. And it, I just want just a little bit of a, of a difference in color there. All right, I think my flower is dark enough, I mean dry enough. I'm going to put some more dark on that flower. And as frightening as it is, I'm going to use some black. I know. Um, I was just trying to get some to come out without half of a tube coming out. Um, sometimes it says it doesn't want to come out of there. Sorry, it's very important that you cap your paints properly immediately so that they stay nice and supple and wet. And this lid did not want to go back on. All right, so I'm going to bring this reference again. I'm aiming for these areas right here. And I do want to put just the barest hint of that here. This is a darker color in here too. I'm not worried so much about this flower. Okay, and then you know just the just these shadings and you see it's got like grain on these petals going out like that. But it is very 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 much a very light gray. Um, I don't want to overwhelm my paintbrush. That's why there's so little paint here. This is way too dark. I can tell by looking at it. I don't even have to hold it up to the picture because I want it to be gray, yes, but not, not starkly gray. That looks good. And so I'm going to brace my hand so that I can get a little bit straighter of a line. I 
don't know if that shows up to you. I can see it in person. Now the reason I'm holding my hand here is so that I have a way to brace my arm to keep it from wiggling. Um, that is the biggest reason why people end up um, wiggling on their lines. But you can buy a, a things to brace that are intended for that purpose or you can use just a piece of dowel rotting um, I learned with my arm so try it up a couple of different techniques whatever works for you is what the right thing is for you and you know a lot of a lot of artists uh, have been taught that they need this piece of th equipment and that piece of equipment and they need to paint with a with a, uh, an easel and they need to paint standing up and I have never been able to paint with an easel not really um, I have done but I just because I'm always, like I said, I've never had a real studio or anything. Um, it was just easier for me to to um, paint on a table. And then I got a drafting table, and I like that, and it's tilted, and I don't do a lot of drafting. I got it for art. <laughs> but um, so I, I use my drafting table. But recently, I bought a, um, a tabletop easel, uh, mostly for talking to y'all, uh, so that you could see what I'm doing um, if I'm doing a bigger piece. Because if I'm doing a piece this small, um, it's very difficult for for me to get the camera in the right position and still be able to reach the the canvas. I don't know how much of this is coming through. I'm hoping you guys can see it. I'm going to add a little bit more of this yellow in here. It's more yellow than gray. And that's why you um, get a little bit more than what you think you might need so that it's still there when you need it. Um, this inside part is pretty yellow. And this one is even darker still. So we're going to have to beef up the darkness on this one. And remember I said about brush strokes mattering. So uh, you're going to want to paint from the center out or from the out straight into the center. You don't want to go across on any of these. And paint anything back here and I need to so going backwards again sorry for my silence
I'm concentrating on the messes I'm making. I'm just trying to make these look like leaves without actually painting new leaves. Now that I have some shading in here, I'm going to go back and uh, I'm going to go back and put a little bit more white on just some white highlights because you know I, d I didn't paint right to the the um, the pencil I don't want the pencil there so I'm just going over and making it blend in Wow, I just stuck my finger in that green paint. Well, that's fun. <laughs> I always paint in older clothes. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm... <laughs> it's a good thing that area is not done yet. Um, I twisted it around so that I could paint the right direction on the flowers. So that's how come I moved it. Like, I don't even know where I am. <laughs> Sorry. I distracted myself when I put my finger in paint and then when I put the, the canvas in paint. I just want to make sure you can see what I'm doing and then I end up messing it up. Sorry, I have no idea what that was. Some kind of notification on my tablet. And I keep trying to turn off all the notifications, but it ignores me. So, I don't know. And if I turn the sound down, then I have other issues. So, Okay, so it doesn't look like the flower yet because it doesn't have any of the details. It's just leaves. But we're almost there where we can um, put in details. This particular piece of pencil right here is being stubborn. And so is this one here. Um, that's why you draw it as lightly as I did even though this particular white is opaque um, you do get times when the pencil just doesn't want to disappear into the background and it needs to um, now I know that that leaf just disappeared into the white but remember I said I was going to do those doily things down there and that'll help with that but I'm going to go back into this green and I'm going to mix a little bit of white with this green. Okay, a lot of white. And I've gotten green in my white now. Um, to make it a real light, 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 light green. And making, rolling my paintbrush to make sure it's still pointy. And I'm going into the center here. And there's a star pattern at the bottom. And it starts in green. We can't see the whole thing right here. Am I showing it to you? I don't know. Right in here. We're going to have to paint 
white and stuff over after I put it in here, but we need we need it down there. So I'm painting that lime green first and then putting on some of the darker green. You gotta have that star going. Oops, that got a little fat there. 